Starting in 2022 then, you started to get a lot more active. With everything I learned from Tasty, I was developing a really solid trading plan. You basically turned 20,000 to 280,000. Hello everybody, we're back. We're gonna do another rising star today. Brad, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for coming out to Chicago and uh, um, and spending the, the day with us. And um, I'm excited to hear the story. You yeah. ready to tell it? Yeah, you know, thank you for having me. It's ever since I started watching Taste like I just, I watched the Rising Star episodes, and I'm like, I want to be on this show. Um, so you're a software engineer, been for about the last 25 years or so. It's pretty much your, your whole career. You're a software engineer working for aeros aerospace industry in Washington, D.C. You're a, um, uh, um, a Java specialist, mostly Java coder. Okay, good, because that's, you know, Tasty is all built on Java. So, <laughs> just so we're clear here. Yes. But we're really here to talk about your um, kind of from 2014, which is last eight, eight, eight years or so, and kind of talk about your trading career. I'm very fortunate that my life gives me a lot of leeway with the shenanigans that I do. Um, but I always believed long term that this would work out. Like, there's a reason for me learning how to trade and how to build wealth. And I just trusted that it was going to work out. I, the, either something that I was doing, I needed to figure out why it's not working, but I believe that I could do it. And it would eventually, it's going to work itself out. At what point, because this can be a really <clears throat> frustrating industry business until you realize that it's on you do you know what i mean it's we, it's such an efficient marketplace that until you actually accept that hey you know what i'm responsible for all my own failures and all my own successes and i think that's usually the turning point for most people was that kind of how it worked i'm just curious because you you spent a couple of years i'm not sure at what point you like you owned it well i think i owned it when i realized that if I had five thousand dollars, I can make it ten, like all day long. Like I've gotten, I don't know if that good, but I understand the markets enough mm -hmm. to know that if I had a small pot, I could, I, I can double it. Um, but then doubling it again was hard. Yes, <laughs> it's like, and in keeping the doubled amount. Yeah, it's like, how do you not, you know, give it back and. Even to this day, I am constantly learning, and obviously trading small is probably the biggest key of keeping what you have. have so, made. so let's 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 work through um, a little of the progression. You know, 2014, you kind of dive in. You've got lots of things going on. 2015, 2016, you're spinning your wheels a little bit. You know, trading. Now, are you mostly trading? Um, listed options, futures. I mean, you said you dabbled in everything, but what, yeah. what do you think the majority of your you know trading effort was? And le let's be clear, the whole time, you're a software engineer. Right, I'm working. Yeah, you're working. And you told me sometimes, you know, like if you're in a high security clearance, you got to run out to your car and get on your phone. You know, right. I, I've, I experienced that when, when, when I was in Washington doing a speaking event. And yeah. I was like, how did any of these guys trade? You know, like <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't understand it. Okay, so honestly... When I first started, I was following your guys' um, strategy of putting a ton on. Yeah. Like I had 30 positions on 30 stocks, 45-day yeah. expiration, the whole gamut. Okay. And it got to be work. You know. Yeah, it's work. It's work. <laughs> yeah. And so. Especially if you, especially if you can't, if you're on a screen. Yeah. 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 And like I said, I was I was flat, and then Pete. Momac and the futures, you know, I started watching those episodes when they started yeah. coming out. And okay, let me give the futures a whirl. And I filed it like a T. Um, and it was going pretty good. And then that's when um, I got a little, little money and I got it up to about 50,000. And then I thought I was. You got what up to fifty? How much? Did, how uh, much start with like? I started with around seventeen thousand. Seventeen to fifty. Okay. And that's I was good. like, wow, that's great. You know, that's a triple. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I think I made it. I, I know what I'm doing. 
And um, and you get slapped. And then yeah, I, well, I traded NQ and mm-hmm. I couldn't keep up with the market. Uh, I guess that was the Trump. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was the Trump Trump years, you know. I'm sure the spoos and the, the the things going to the moon, but on the e minis, I could keep up with it. I I had a totally hedged, and I could I could keep up with it. But NQ just yeah from knocked about, me down like 2000. Well, after you know, kind of the middle of 2016 all the way to 2018, the NQ was out of control. Yeah, and uh, I I couldn't yeah. keep up. With it. I couldn't hedge it. It and it basically blew up that account yeah and um but i could keep up with the es yeah i mean i i totally had about it. half the size move yeah and and the illiquidity of the options and nq it, it just didn't work so then i then then the cerveza sick happened and i just really after i blew up that i kind of just focused on work and getting my finances together and um next thing i knew there's expiration dates every day on the s and p spx okay like, so hold on, hold on you're, you're getting ahead sorry. of yourself here yeah sorry so, so I went too fast yeah so so yeah. so you really had kind of a crazy roller coaster where you um you know where you're active you're trying everything and then you just get frustrated you step away so then what brought you back i had well we at this point we paid off quite a bit of debt and i had i had money to to dork around with again and um and, and i love it it's what you know it's your passion you know you're reloaded so I'm okay so so you're out of the market during the pandemic in in 20 and then in 21 you start to like just inch your way back a little bit yeah yeah just dabbling um yeah. you know i love bonds uh okay. have have a colleague of mine that that traded bonds one summer and made a killing <laughs> And you know, and you love bonds too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Not this tre- week, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. The treasuries are always fun. Let's go through this because on your bio, what's what's interesting is the um, is the crazy success, and this is why you're doing the rising star segment. Is so so they have these dailies, and we haven't had anybody on here talking about dailies, and you've been basically following most of the tasty mechanics all along prior to this, but you kind of fall you fall for this product, which is okay. Um, your accounts, you said about 20 grand at the time, yep. right? That's the amount of money you committed to it. And you decide that in the dailies, you're going to maybe do something a little bit different. What'd you do? So if I can just capture the move and capture that quick theta, I could just make a couple hundred dollars. You know, my goal is make just a couple hundred dollars or maybe four hundred dollars a day you know small a dollar we won't even call it yeah sorry we won't even talk about the dollar amount if i could catch 50 cents to a dollar out of out of a a quick move that's all i was looking looking at and then with everything i learned from tasty i was developing a really solid um trading plan just because I watched the market so much. I, you, you start to understand patterns. You understand what's going on. Okay, so like, give me some specific examples. Um, you know, if I, so part of my trading plan is if I trade in the morning, I go for a buck, just buck. Don't don't try to hit a home run. Just get a dollar out of the market, and. Call now, it, call it just done. so we understand, you're doing mostly at this point. You're doing mostly defined risk, yep. wide spreads. Correct. Definers. So like ten, twenty dollars wide, defined risk, credit, uh, credit, credit spreads. spreads, credit spreads. Credit. I credit always spreads. sell. You always I'm sell. An, I'm an option seller. Right. So you're selling. You're selling ten, twenty point wide call spreads or ten or twenty point wide put spreads. Correct. How many are you selling each time? One. One. Two. One. Because it's the manage manager, the manageability of that trade. Because if you go too big, when I roll, I always roll for a credit. Yep. And when you do that, you have to double the width of your strikes. So okay. if I go ten, I'm gonna have to roll for a twenty, and then, and I don't roll more than two or three times. And when you roll, are you rolling out in time? Okay. Not only that, I'm rolling to the market. So. So you're paying debits. 
No. Sometimes. Oh, you're always just rolling up, so you're paying, so you're collecting money. So you're always rolling the untested side, and you're rolling closer to the out the money. Correct. I, okay. I'm rolling out and up or out and down. Got it. How many trades do you make a day? Probably two or three. Two or three. And are those opening trades or adjustments? Yeah, they're they're opening. They're opening. Okay. And, and depending how, on the day, it's only yeah. one because it's a good day. Right, right. And 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 so and how many adjustments do you make? Like is that to two or three include the adjustments? I don't really adjust unless I have to roll. Okay. Oh, are, are you are you holding these positions till expiration? I do I roll them until ten minutes until the close. I for last year my trading plan is crazy. I I put it on. Mm-hmm. Get a buck, I'm out. Then I wait for the 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 afternoon session about maybe one o'clock, yeah, twelve o'clock yeah. Eastern. And I put those on and I literally hold hold on to them until three fifty. <laughs> I am rolling at the nth hour because what I've learned is that you don't know where it, and it could be because of zero DTEs. You don't know where you're ending up. So no, if you, there's no way. If you if you roll even a half hour early, you still can get. You're still ten or twenty handles yeah. the wrong direction. So yeah. I'm like, well, I'm just going to do this at the the last minute so I can be current with the market for my roll. Got it. So starting in 2022, then you start to get a lot more active, and mostly active in the zero DTS, yeah. and always doing what, what what you're saying was essentially an at the money credit spread one way or the other 50 50 shot 50 50 shot doesn't matter you, you risk no, one make one yeah yeah 50 50 shot risk one to make one no love for either side of the market except mostly you sell call spreads because the market was weak last year yeah and cutting straight to the punchline you basically turn 20,000 to 280,000 yep correct doing credit spreads that's amazing and my S, the SPX PNL for the year was three hundred six thousand for twenty twenty two. For twenty twenty two, and you, you would attribute that mostly all to zero DTS, and that's that's remarkable. And the luck of the option gods. <laughs> Do you feel like what you have developed confidence wise and what you've developed trading wise is scalable into perpetuity, or maybe not even scalable but repeatable into perpetuity? I believe so. Okay, I'm hoping so. Okay. Um, and like what you mentioned earlier, once you sort of get behind the eight ball, you want to catch up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And staying small has been challenging because I want to catch up a little bit. Um, so because when that it sounds re- like you caught up a little bit. Yeah. I, I caught up a lifetime's worth of. Yeah. A lifetime's of worth of just kind of, you know. Dragging yourself around at like you know at you know spinning your wheels for a couple of years, and all of a sudden it clicks in, and you know when that clicks, it's pretty special. And when you go out and you start researching what you did, because mind you, I developed my trading plan from my own experience. Yeah, most people do, right? Yeah. yeah. And then for one day, I just decided to go on YouTube and start googling zero DTE trades, and there's this young lady doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing. I'm like, great minds must think alike, you know? So I obviously- There's only one movie playing. So the great minds have to think alike right. because there's literally only one movie playing. So, you know, so there has to be a lot of people on the same thinking the same thing or doing the same thing. But it's two people can think and do the same thing and one person can make a lot of money, the other person makes nothing. Right. So it's very possible. And I, I guess my, my thinking was is I truly understand um what i'm doing yeah that's a good feeling that's a good feeling are you doing any um two-sided spreads like like a condor yeah Yeah, you are doing some yeah so like you know we know well i don't know we know but you know you understand like mondays there could be a a challenging day to trade so i just throw on a little ic and and um and and i skew it too you know i may skew it to the downside or the upside of course and um and I, i i make a little money what about some different strategies or some different underlyings just to mix things up a little bit so you don't get too, you know, narrow minded in the focus. Well, I've been trying to do some butterflies in some non volatile. 
uh, underlings. Um, I currently have a position in uranium, as I believe in uh, nuclear energy, but um, I don't know how well that's going right now at all, but I, I'm giving it a shot. Thinking forward for the rest of this year and next year, like, like, what do you do different? Do you stay with the same program or do you do something different? I mean, a thousand percent return, you know, turning 20,000 into 200 and something thousand is incredible. I mean, how do you back that up without losing a little bit of your discipline or getting on, you know, letting your ego get in the way? I mean, I could easily say it. It's like, well, why can't I turn 200,000 into half into, a million or a million? To two million. Yeah. yeah. That would be fantastic. Why I, not? Um, I think why not is because trying to keep small and and um okay, trying to fair. you know you don't want to get over leveraged on a on, on a position yeah that's fair um there is other um types of trades that i i'm looking at that i think if my account was bigger i'd be more interested like in doing. give me an example um like instead of being at the money being um a little bit out of the money way like 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 a 20 or 10 delta Mm -hmm. and just letting in wider. So I'd, I'd be like 20 wide, 10 delta, and just let the theta just crush and just um, be like a little bit less stressful trade. You know? Do you do any ratio spreads? No. No. So you pretty much stick to, because it's expensive, you know, I, I guess that makes sense. But you pretty much stick to define some form of defined risk. Yeah. I like okay. my risk one, make one. Or... Like when we were having big moves, I'd go outside the money. You know, I'd I'd collect six or seven dollars and just let it come to me. And it, those were really fun days. Do you get flat at the end of every day, or do you let it go to expire? I roll, especially calls. I roll them. So you have the same position coming in the next day. Um, depends on how far I, I roll. roll got it. Them. But if you're doing zero DT, you got to make a decision by the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So you you roll those. Yeah. Got it. So, like, I know, um, as of this recording, we have non-farm payrolls on Friday. Yeah. So I rolled till Wednesday. <laughs> oh, so you do a skip day? Yeah, I I I, uh, I rolled it out to give myself a little bit more time because I don't know what's going to happen with with that event and give me the weekend for a little bit more theta decay. That's interesting. I didn't think about that because most people that trade the dailies kind of stick with the dailies, um, but that's interesting. I like that. I try to be information aware too. I try to che I check the calendars every day and try yeah. to know what's going on in the market. When you're trading S and P, SPX, do you watch anything else? Like, do you watch bonds? Do you watch Nasdaq? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, what are your key indicators? So I have the DXY. Okay. I have gold. Yeah. I have bonds. Yeah. Yeah, and VIX obviously VIX is on there. Okay, sure. So it's it's the big ones. And I still like trading the beans. <laughs> I love trading beans. It's really impressive that. You know, after a couple of little bumps, a couple of hurdles, a couple, little time off, you know, everything came together for you. Now, you're, now you're done. Now, you, now you know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. I mean, as far as trading goes, I think I have a pretty clear path. I like it, dude. I like it. I like it. I like it, Brad. That's good. Um, well, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to hear the story, um, and I can't wait till we get you know customer feedback and everybody tells us what they think. And I appreciate you having me on the show and, and all the hard work and effort that you guys do to Thank you. to you know, educate people. And I've learned a ton from the content you guys provide. It's great. Thanks so much. Thank you.